Unfortunately, many of the species that we know and have come to love in the Acadian forest are not expected to fare well under climate change. The biggest thing that I can see for landowners to help in climate change response is to know their forest. But if we don't know that something's happening, we can't address it. And so knowing your land, knowing what you have out there and how it's changing is really important. The role of the forest professional is to help the landowner or landowners understand, first of all, what it is they have from an ecological perspective. The secondary role of the forest professional, which most people think about, is actively managing a forest. So what's true in the highlands of Cape Breton isn't necessarily true in Western Nova Scotia. And what's true in that fundy fog belt is not true here in terms of climate and, and its effects. The big thing to think about in the Acadian forest is that most of our tree species can be classified into three separate groups. Our boreal species, black spruce, tamarack or larch, also balsam fir, and then a non-conifer, white birch or paper birch, Unfortunately, in this region, these boreal affiliated species are expected to decline. Our hemiboreal species, this can include white pine, red spruce, our maples, red maple and sugar maple. These hemiboreal species don't have a simple answer to climate change. It depends on how the climate changes, how much it warms and how much precipitation that we really have. And then our southerly or our temperate species, red oak, um, American elm, basswood, ironwood, black cherry. Under climate change, we're expecting that many of our southerly species are gonna do quite well and increase their population. As we talk about climate change, invasive insects or invasive fungi that are coming from other areas may be better adapted to these future climate regimes. And unfortunately, we could see an increase in the number or the damage caused by some of these pests and pathogens. Usually this white mycelial fan is really indicative of our malaria, which is a root rot pathogen. And then it usually comes in through the roots and spreads up. As I've taken the time to study climate change in the Acadian forest, I think the most surprising factor to me is just how much is affected. So if we can get in at the ground level and manage our forests to help improve or become more resilient to climate change, that's the best option we have because we know it's coming. We know climate change is going to happen. So let's do what we can to protect our forests and protect every other component that's involved with our forests and with climate change. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna visit three different stands from the point of view of assessing their risk associated with projected climate change. The stand we're gonna start with is this stand. This is a natural, late successional black spruce forest. As a general principle, naturally occurring black spruce forests grow on very nutrient poor, very unproductive sites. Certainly not somewhere you'd want to grow your tomatoes. We have black spruce both dominating the canopy here, if we look up, and we have black spruce seedlings regenerating in partial shade. So as far as assessing site, um, the starting point is always assessing soil. The relevance of soils is about site capability and, and site productivity. With each sample, one needs to not only look at the color of the soil, but also is the texture of the soil. So more than 50% sand and less than 20% clay. So this is actually a, a, a forested wetland, is what this is. The reality is, is that the reason why black spruce dominates here is because the growing conditions are so poor that nothing else really grows here. So in terms of assessing black spruce risk associated with climate change, because of black spruce's obvious adaptation to very cold boreal climates, the further north we move and or the further higher up we go, right, in terms of elevation, the less risky black spruce is related to climate change. So at what point does the climate become unsuitable to black spruce? Or do we get to the point where there are other species that are more competitive due to a, a climate shift? I mean, black spruce is not a competitive species, right? And it's not a fast growing species. So my gut would tell me that the southern limit of black spruce isn't a climate function. It's actually a, 
competition function. I think there are other species further south that grow better than black spruce in those climates and I'll compete it. And certainly this is going to remain naturally black spruce dominated, you know, without somebody doing something drastic to it for a very long time. And will these trees suffer and grow slower as a result of climate change? Remember that black spruce is not only tolerant of wet soils, it's, only, it's also tolerant of drought. It makes it a, a, difficult, a difficult stand to assess in terms of climate change. The irony in this is that although this is a boreal looking and a boreal kind of forest, and we almost want to call it a boreal forest, which it's not, to me this is less risk than if this was balsam fir, for example, or even red spruce. I think that, that, that pure red spruce stands outside of that ideal climate are at high risk of climate change. Now we find ourselves in a mixed wood stand. And in this case, we have red maple, yellow birch, some white birch, the occasional ash, and spruce fir. So balsam fir and the occasional red spruce. See, there's balsam fir everywhere. So historically, people have, have selectively logged these stands um, primarily for their softwood potential, right? Historically, people weren't hunting for red maple trees. They are hunting for big spruce. Yeah, so this is red spruce, right? Not black. And although there's a valuable long-lived tree, it is not predicted to do well in the next hundred years as the climate warms, especially not here. It's certainly rocky. <laughs> As in very rocky. This is a different soil type than the black spruce stem we're in. This is actually a fine textured soil with about just over 20% clay. This is medium, nutrient medium, and the moist regime is fresh. From a climate change perspective, we have species here that are already um, well adapted to the changing climate, red maple being the prime example you know, almost the, the Eastern forest super tree. It would be fair to assume that as the climate changes of the next century, the climate here is gonna become more and more favorable to red maple. Balsam fir, on the other hand, is a late successional component of the forest, meaning that it will regenerate in the shade, it will dominate the understory, it will become periodically dominant components of the canopy. Um, it is very uh, susceptible to all kinds of insects and disease and will become more and more stressed as a result of climate change. Because unlike black spruce, balsam fir is sensitive to climate change, sensitive to extremes in weather, and it's susceptible to all kinds of disease and insects. And we are certainly at the southern limit of balsam fir's range in this part of the world. So based on my assessment of this stand in terms of climate change risk, I would rate this at at least medium, medium risk associated with climate change. Um, and if I look at the ingrowth in this stand, if, I were, if you were not to manage this stand, the amount of balsam fir in the stand is actually going to increase without treatment could become higher and higher risk over time, for sure. Now we find ourselves in a balsam fir dominated forest. Very typical and very common forest type throughout our entire region of the Maritimes. And not only is the canopy dominated by balsam fir here, but the regeneration layer that's developing in this young stand is dominated by balsam fir as well. They're either the result of stands that naturally succeed to balsam fir dominance, depending on where you are, or in the case of this, they can actually be a result of early silvicultural intervention where the hardwood component has been taken out resulting in an almost pure balsam fir dominated stand. Left to its own devices, this stand will continue to age, but continue to become dominated by fewer and fewer larger trees. It's not a rich site, so there's no reasonable reason to think that this is gonna to succeed towards mixed wood or hardwood. Um, old balsam fir stands, unless they're in very sheltered sites, become more and more susceptible to wind, wind events. 
But even if the canopy was blown down in the stand, if the regeneration layer is already established the balsam fir, they'll just sit there waiting for light and take over the stand again. Balsam fir is also naturally susceptible to a wide range of natural insects and disease, the most famous of which is the spruce budworm. But it's also uh, very poor at compartmentalizing rot. It's prone to butt and root rots, and it's not tolerant of, of environmental extremes. In my assessment, this is a high risk stand because balsam fir is highly susceptible to the predicted climate changes that are coming. The degree of risk associated with balsam fir currently and even over the next 50 years or more is largely due to where you are. So we could be in a balsam fir dominated stand in Madawaska County in Northwestern New Brunswick and balsam fir is still a fairly prized tree and, and grows very well and also at higher elevations. So in terms of managing for climate change and mitigating against it, understanding what you have and what its potential is, is the first, is always the first question. What is its potential? What's growing there? What could grow there? What you could manage for, what you could manage for, like, you know, you know, the extreme example, I once had a woodlawn owner that wanted a sugar bush, but he owned a black spruce forest. And I had to tell him, you're never gonna grow sugar maple there. And he actually went and bought a new woodlot. <laughs>